Hi everyone, welcome to Creative Storytelling Workshops, an LA County Library virtual event in partnership with the LA County Museum of Art. I'm Catherine Adams, a librarian at LA County Library, and I'll be your host today. Before we begin, we wanted to make a quick introduction to one of our resources for parents and caregivers with one of our positive parenting librarians. Before we get started, let me introduce myself and tell you a little bit about how LA County Library can support your parenting needs. My name is Yvonne and I'm a positive parenting librarian with LA County Library. I have been accredited by a research-based positive parenting program to provide tips and resources to help you with your child's behavior. These tips include topics such as being a parent, encouraging creativity in your child, and supporting your partner. I'll be available during this program to answer questions in the chat as well as for 10 minutes after the program ends. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a, with a positive parenting librarian. These consultations are available in both English and Spanish. I have posted the link for scheduling a consultation with us in the chat. You will also find the link in the email that comes to you after the program ends. Thank you, Yvonne. All righty. Let me switch back to Catherine. Okay. So, continuing with today's program, exploring the theme of civic engagement, Librarian Kay will be reading the book, Giant Steps to Change the World for us, followed by an art activity led by LACMA teaching artist Billy and moderated by Carmen. So let's get started. Kay will start us off with a story reading. Take it away, Kay. Good afternoon and welcome today. Uh, we're going to read a book today called uh, Giant Steps to Change the World by Spike Lee and Tonia Lewis Lee. Let's see if you can see the cover here. All right, and it's illustrated by Sean Qualls. And uh, my name is Kay. I'm the children's librarian here at Yakaboni Library in Lakewood, part of the LA County Library System. And we want to go ahead and thank Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers for us to be able to read this book today for you, okay? On some days, your dreams may seem too far away to realize. Listen to the whispers of those that came before. Those who had hard days but dared to make their dreams come true. They made giant steps to make the world a better place and left big shoes for you to fill. The road won't be easy. People will try to exclude you, but you must leap over hurdles like the Olympic athlete who won the gold, even though he had been relegated to second class status by the very country he was representing. Do you know who this is? They're talking about Jesse Owens. He was an Olympic runner. There will be dark days and lonely nights. Press on through the darkness and keep going. The way the freedom fighter encouraged the enslaved to ride the railroad to safety so that all could be free. And here they're talking about Harriet Tubman. You won't always have the answers. Ask for help and guidance. Like the teacher who started a school for children thought unteachable and turned them into scholars. I didn't know who this was. I had to look it up. And the woman's name is uh, Marva Collins and she's a teacher. Others may try to force you to ignore your principles. Stand your ground like the heavyweight champion who refused to pick up a gun against a fellow human being. And this, can you guess who this is? He's a boxer, right? So his name is Muhammad Ali. If they tell you, no, you are not smart enough, prove them wrong with your fortitude and brilliance, like the neurosurgeon with magic hands, because they were wrong about him and they are wrong about you. Here they're talking about Ben Carson. Your heart will ache for your countryman who is hungry. Go to him and feed him, like the woman who dedicated her life to feeding the hungry and healing the sick. She asked for nothing in return. Can you figure out who this is? This is Mother Teresa. Can you see her veil appear in the picture? When you witness the ills that poverty and lack of education heap on a commu community, lend your voice like the poet who wrote of the pain and the beauty of neighborhoods forgotten. And down here we have the book. 
the Negro Speaks of Rivers, and today they're talking about Langston Hughes, who was a poet. If you stare at a painting and do not see yourself there, paint your own portrait. Let the world see that you do exist and that you are truly special, like the boy from Brooklyn whose style was so unique. Here, you see the crown? They're talking about Jean-Michael Basquiat, and he wore a lot of crowns in all of his um, art when he did self-portraits. While some may say you are crazy, wild, or even selfish, you know you are just like the scientist who had a hard time learning to read, but whose theories became the basis for most of modern science. Do you see up here? We've got E equals MC squared. So we're talking about Albert Einstein. He had some trouble reading, and now look what he did. When those whispering in your ear tell you that your country is in need of a new leadership and new direction, make a plan and make your voice heard like the man who dreamed of his father, found his own vision and changed the world forever by becoming president of the United States. Who do you think this is? It's Barack Obama. Can you tell by his little finger? He's holding it up. That first step is key. You may be so unsteady that you actually fall, but you must pick yourself back up and keep on stepping. Your might and courage will be the foundation that impacts us all. So when you take that first big step, beware of the worst enemy of all, fear. Fear of failure, fear, fear of success, fear of being different, fear of being the same. Shoot down that fear like the mighty pilots from Tuskegee who shot down their Nazi foes from the sky. Take a giant step over that fear like the giant step of one astronaut made on the moon for all mankind. And this is Neil Armstrong. Did you know that? Now it's your turn. Everyone is waiting. What's your next step going to be? The end. And so we have back here some quotes from all of the different people that we've talked about today. So thank you so much for reading with us today. I had a really good time. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> so um, now we're going to switch gears to our art workshop. So I will hand it over to our friends from LACMA. So hi, I'm Billy Ray Vinson, and I'm a teaching artist with LACMA. Um, so I also want to introduce Carmen. Carmen, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, so I'm Carmen Velasquez, and I'm an education lead at Lackman. I'll be assisting with the um, art class with any questions that you have. You could just send them my way. <laughs> okay, great. So we're going to be using the chat. Um, so if you do have questions, Carmen will always look at the chat. Make sure to address, or just a reminder, to address your questions to all panelists so that Carmen can see those and flag anything that I don't see. Um, well, that book was amazing. I love that book. Um, so I think it's a really great idea, that idea of changing the world. So we're going to think about how we can change the world with an artwork, how an artwork can change the world. Uh, before we get into all that, I just want to give everyone a couple of extra minutes to make sure that you've got the materials you need. So I'm going to share my screen and make sure that you can... See it? Here we go. Okay, Carmen, can you just let me know that you can see my screen nice and clearly? All good. All good. Okay, great. So, to, if you have questions about materials, feel free to uh, like uh, ask the questions in the chat. I'm just going to go very quickly over the materials, and then I'll go into more depth while you run and grab any last bits. So, it's paper. So, regular white paper will do. Um, get a couple of sheets of that um, would be good. Scissors, a pencil, coloring tools, including crayons, markers, coloring pencils, anything like that, really. Uh, glue and collage materials. And collage is basically uh, any kind of like pattern papers, um, you know, paper bags, you could even use uh, sort of recycled wrapping paper. Uh, you also want to find, if you've got any ads, you know, like those grocery store ads, um, you can cut words and pictures out of those. 
tin foil, any stickers you have, if you have colored tape, um, and really just all the sort of things that you might find around your house, um, even old paper bags, you know, lunch bags, something like that. So I'm going to give you just about, uh, you should, if you don't have all of those things in front of you, um, don't worry, but run and grab them now. I'm going to go through each thing and, and give you some alternatives in case you don't have all of those things. So uh, the white paper can be, if you, if, even if you only have lined paper, that's fine. Um, you also, the scissors are not essential because we can always rip and tear the paper if you don't have access to scissors. So don't worry if you don't have scissors. Um, pencil, hopefully everyone has a pencil, but if you don't, any kind of writing implement will do. Uh, coloring tools, again, not totally essential. Like if, if you only have like a highlighter pen or something, you could use that as a coloring tool. Uh, glue, um, again, glue, glue stick or like a white glue is fine. Um, if you, again, if you don't have glue, then if you happen to have any kind of adhesive like tape or stickers, that'll work as well. And collage materials should, can just be, you know, the stuff, paper stuff you have around your house that you're allowed to use. Okay, so hopefully everyone's had time to run and grab. Is there any questions about materials in the chat? I think we can hear your, your typing a little bit there. Oh, someone's typing. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I think we've got all of our materials. Um, and so we're going to move on. And we're going to learn about an artwork before we get going on our art making project that hopefully will inspire us. So I'm going to go to the next image and we're going to look at this artwork. So this artwork is by Shepherd Ferry. And I want you just to look at the artwork. It's interesting when we think about the library and how there's lots of books. Um, and often people who write books, you know, they use words. And sometimes there's illustrations, they use words and pictures to tell their stories. And artists do the same thing. But they like, as you can notice, there's not many words in this particular artwork, just lots of pictures. But let's try and figure out what the meaning of this picture is. What's the message that the artist is trying to send. So if you want to type in the chat something you notice, like maybe just one word about something that you notice in the uh, in the image or something to describe it, anything that stands out to you, one word, um, or if you think even if you think you know what it means or you have an idea. Oh, someone says symmetry. That's cool. We got any other? So, 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 oh, it's someone that said they're noticing a flower. And just to explain that word symmetry, that's a good word. Symmetry means the same on both sides. So that's important. Lo somebody said love. Oh, I like that. I wonder, oh, like there is a kind of heart shape almost. So I didn't even see that. See, I love it when we do these programs. I see artworks through your eyes too. So I'm community. Unity. So these are all words coming up. These are the words that kind of connect. I'm wondering, why do we think the word unity? We can see some hands holding something at the bottom, holding something. The world, something about the world. Earth. Hmm, interesting. So isn't it interesting that you're all picking up on all these words, even though there are no words in the picture? You're just, these are coming to your mind. Anything else? Any other piece? Okay. And maybe you're getting these things. Think about why. Why are you saying these words as well? Like, why are these things coming to your mind? What about the shapes and the colors that you're seeing? They're telling you that. Okay, I'll give any last, any last words? Compassion. Oh, these are such beautiful words. I love this. And I'll give just images of energy. Actually, yeah, those lines, like emanating out from those little shapes. They look almost like leaf shapes. Those emanating out is almost like that kind of idea of energy as well. Anything else? Any last comments before I tell you a little bit more about it? Any last ones? Did I miss anything, Carmen? Just a couple of words. Um, beauty, uh, a kid said. Um, love, world. I think that's... Okay. Beauty. That's lovely. Nature. Okay. Nature. Love. 
Okay. I, you know, it's funny. I've told you very little about it, and I think you've picked up on a lot of what this image is all about. So I'm going to read you a quote from the artist. The title of the artwork is called The Respect and Justice Letterpress. And he said this about this artwork. He said, the respect and justice image is a call to celebrate, celebrate, <laughs> respect and nurture the planet. So you all kind of picked up on that right away, the idea of the earth. Um, the interior, the inside, um, talks about the earth ecosystem inspired by the concept of Gaia or the earth as one organism with a respiratory system. So that's, he's basically talking about the earth like it's a person, like it's a being with, with, that breathes um, and that everything is connected. So the earth's delicate respiratory system can be thrown dangerously out of balance by climate change. True justice for the earth and the future generations of all species can only be achieved by respecting the fragility of the ecosystems that sustain life. So he's also talking, the last part of the quote is about how the future of the earth is in our hands, which is why he's used those images of the hands holding the flower. You've got this idea of the energy and the, almost like those lines might represent breath. But it's so amazing that you all kind of picked up on those ideas without me even telling you anything. So that's great. So we're going to be inspired by this idea of creating an artwork that conveys a message about something that's really important to you. So artworks um, can be a form of, you know, we're talking about civic engagement, which means that you're trying to change the world, trying to change, yeah, make, have an impact. And artworks can do that. But before we do that, I just want to introduce you to one word. So the word protest, what we're going to do today is actually create our very own protest poster. But I wanted to explain what the word protest means, right? So a protest, it can be a public expression of objection towards an idea or action. So it, it can be something you disagree with that you feel strongly about, about an important issue. Um, so often, you know, we've seen lots of examples of protests in recent history, people speaking out for Black Lives Matter, people speaking out for the environment and climate change, just like Shepard Ferry. And protests can take lots and lots of different forms. It can be like an individual person making a statement. Um, and a protest can even come in the form of a work of art, which is what we're going to think about today. So I also, I'll tell you a little bit, when we get art making, I'll tell you a little bit more about Shepard Ferry's um, artwork. Um, but for now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come back to all of you. Um, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, I actually might ask now that uh, I switch to my other screen for the focus. Can Catherine, would you mind switching my art make to my art making screen? And someone come and give me the thumbs up when we're all good on that side. Just want to make sure so that we're ready to start. We're all good. Okay, great. So, as I said, with all those materials that you gathered, we are going to create our own protest poster um, about an issue or an idea that is important to you. But the first thing I want to ask you is what is going to be your issue? What's important to you? So for me, for example, I, I really feel strongly about equal rights and also climate change, like Shepard Ferry. Um, Carmen, do, what, how about you? Do you have any import issues that are really important to you? Yeah, I actually studied labor laws, so um, equal workplace uh, laws. Um, so I followed really closely with like Justice for Janitors. Um, so anything union related and um, uh, worker rights uh, cool. and immigration rights as well. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, yeah, that's really important. So people having equal rights to pay, being treated properly, right? So when you think about what issue you want to make your artwork about, what message you want to send, think about something that's important to you. So it could be something small and personal. It doesn't have to be a really big idea. It can be something that uh, you feel is unfair, that you want to change, it, or it could be a big idea. Like, 
like climate change, something like that. So it's up to you what kind of message you want to create your artwork about, what, what kind of issue or idea. And when, it, when you've chosen your issue or idea, we're going to use a combination of words and pictures. Or if you just want to use pictures, just like Shepherd Ferry, you could also do that. And so I'm going to give you a few tips and ideas for how to create the different parts of your artwork. And then we're eventually going to glue them all down onto a piece of paper. So you can see here, none of my pieces are actually glued down right now. They're kind of all, oh, the bug, come to join us. Um, so we've got all of these different parts that I'll ask you not to glue everything down right away. So the very first step is to get your collage materials and start to cut out pictures or uh, words or letters that uh, will help to convey your message. So, for example, you know, I've actually written all these words myself, which I'm going to teach you how to do in a little bit. Um, but you could also cut out letters from magazines, newspapers, or ads, even those like grocery store ads. You see, this is the letter O I cut out. And you could actually make your own words out of letters that you find. Oh, and also, if you speak other languages and you want to write words in other languages, you can totally do that as well, because it's really important to sort of, uh, speak in whatever language you feel most comfortable with. And if that's pictures, that's OK, too. So any, if there's any questions up to this point, um, I'll ask Carmen if there's anyone, anyone mm -hmm. asking questions? No? Okay. Questions in the chat yet. No. Okay, great. So again, if you do have any questions about materials or anything like that, just let, let us know in the chat. Um, so basically what you should be doing now is figuring out what kind of message you want to create your artwork about, what kind of issue or idea. And then you should be now starting to go through some of your collage materials and cut things out. So I'm going to move some of these words. You have to think, what are you going to make your artwork about? What's important to you? So you can find, I'm going to ask you, as I said, not to cut things out, uh, not to cut things out, not to stick things down, sorry, um, because we've, you're going to want to move them around to, to see which directions you want to put things in and how you can make it look different by moving things around. That's the great thing about collage, which is what we're doing right now. We're making a collage. So think about finding words and also or using finding pictures uh, that can represent the words. So, for example, I have the word art here. Now, I don't necessarily have to use that as my, you know, words for meaning art, I can draw a picture instead. So like I can use a little drawing I made of, you know, a paint palette, and I could use that instead. And I could include both, or I could take one away. I'm just using general things. I'm not gonna uh, do an artwork about any specific issue because I, I want them all to be about what you wanna focus on. I'm just giving you some examples here. You can also do things like, you know, if you disagree with something or you want to put kind of, I know there's symbols you can use, like the little, you know, sign that you see for stop or no. So you could use little symbols to communicate your message. There's another example. Somebody said love when they saw the Shepherd Fairy. And there's like that heart shape. It's a good way to symbolize the idea of love. We also, you know, you can also draw little pictures. I have this word community here, for example. Symbolize that with a little drawing of people. So there's lots of ways you can find. So search through your collage materials. If you have any magazines, search through things to see if you can find pictures that will connect with your message. So I'm going to give you some time because sometimes if you're looking for collage things, um, you know, you might find what you're looking for, but it takes some time. So this is another example. I have some patterned paper here that's painted. And say you wanted to do something about climate change. This could be a really good example for 
you know, the ocean. You could use the color to symbolize the ocean, for example. But there's, there's lots of things. It all depends on what you've got at home. So the other thing you can do is also combine different images to change their meaning, which is really fun. So I have a little flower here, right? Right there. And if I want to talk about the environment and uh, how it's in, you know, we need to look after the environment, I might take that flower and combine it with something else uh, to, to really create my message. So what if I put my, um, like a little no sign and cut out some paper flames, something like this and think about a heart shape or something that would go around like this. There's lots of things that you can do. It's all about putting, combining images and pictures and words. So what you should be doing now is just gathering the words, letters, cutting out. You, you can, and again, if you don't have scissors, you can rip, you can rip words. So for example, I have this word adventure. Um, but maybe I only want one letter. Uh, so if I only want the U, for example, I'm going to just tear the paper. You can just pinch it like this. OK. So I'm just going to give I'm kind of giving you some time to look through your objects and start finding uh, the letters that you want for your issue. And at the end, by the way, we'll have a little time at the end to do a little share out in the chat so you can write what your issue or message is into the chat at the end. But you see, you can do things like this. So start to find your letters. But again, don't glue anything down. So while you're finding all those things um, and looking through to find things that will uh, convey your message, your message, your protest message. I'm going to show you um, how to do some of that chunky writing. So again, you don't have to include words at all if you don't want to. But if you do want to, and you don't happen to have lots of newspapers or words um, at home, and you want to write your own letters, there's a really easy way to do it. So I'm going to use my pencil. Um, and I'm going to just write really big so that you can see it nice and clearly. So I'm going to use the word, uh, let's just use the word art because it's three letters. It's nice and easy. So I'm going to draw just regular lettering. I'm going to do my letters nice and big because if we're thinking about protest and we want to give a message, we want our letters to be nice and big and clear, right? Okay. So I'm going to draw just regular like that, but I'm going to kind of space them out like that. So you can see the word art that I've just written. Then I'm going to use um, another color. So I have a marker pen here that I'm going to use. And I'm basically going to go outside, go outline the letters uh, to make them chunkier, like I did for this one, for example. So I'm going to, going to do it. Like just go all the way around, like just outline like this. See how my letters already become kind of chunky. OK. There we go. It's OK if they kind of run into each other. It's kind of part of the fun of it. OK. So this is a way that you can create your own chunky letters if you don't have some of those collage materials at home. So I'm hoping that so if you want to, um, if, if anyone's still struggling with a particular issue or idea that they want to make their artwork about, um, anyone wants to feel free to type in the chat some of the things that you're going to make your artwork about to inspire other people. But I know you might all be kind of rushing around getting collage materials together right now. So, But if you want to contribute and put in the chat your ideas, you can. So there you go. That's one way to create some lettering. But you can also 
uh, use kind of all kinds of funky lines as well to create lettering. So I'm going to use the same word again, art. Maybe I'll choose a different color. Uh, let's see. Use that blue. Let's try, like, maybe using zigzag lines. And that will create a completely different effect. But it still makes your letters kind of chunky. You can even use different different types of lines for each letter. Think about your letters and how they appear if, if you are going to be using lettering. There we go. So that's some, just a couple of different suggestions, but I'm sure you can come up with lots of different ways to show your art. There you go. See that? You can get some use in different types of lines. Okay. So while you're gathering your collage materials and thinking about ways to combine pictures and words, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Shepherd Ferry's art book. Uh, let me see. I'm still finding my thing. Uh, let's go back. So I'm going to go back. If it's okay, Catherine, I'm going to. Can you switch back to me for a second so that I can go back? Yeah. Are we... Okay. Thank you. Switch. Okay. Great. We could see you now, Billy. Okay. Great. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go back and share the image one more time while you're all getting your different, make, creating your words, adding your pictures, just to give us a little bit more inspiration. Okay, so I want to also talk to you about um, that word. Somebody said that word symmetry and how you arrange some of your words and pictures on the page, right? So. Shepherd Ferry here, he's layered things on top of one another. In the background, he's got these kind of flowers, and then he's got this shape kind of in the middle. Um, and as, you know, with that word, he's got it kind of this symmetry on both sides. You can even see that, the earth in the center of that flower up there. But he's layered, put lots of things on top of each other. So you can think about layering some of your words as well, words and pictures on top of one another. You can also, Billy? yeah. Um, maybe if they put in the chat uh, the their cause, like what's most important for them, and maybe we could bounce some ideas on what that represents. So, like if someone puts in um, like immigration rights, uh, butterflies, big symbol, just like the hands, yeah. the flower, the earth. Um, and maybe because we've got a comment here saying um, equal rights for women. Um, oh. So, okay. Yeah, so equal rights for women. I know that um, purple is used a lot for like the suffragette movement in the beginning. Uh, so purple oh, might be a big aspect in their poster making. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yes, absolutely. Share your ideas in the chat with what you're going with, and it'll help us. We can kind of it'll help inspire other people. And I love that idea, Carmen. That's great. Um, yeah, also think about, you know, the rights for women. There was the Women's March that took place. All of these things are really important to our society now. Um, so go ahead and share a cause that you are uh, using, you know, you're going to create an artwork about. And, you know, we can always help to brainstorm ideas for how you can represent those things. Also, I, I wanted to also tell you a little bit more about Shepherd Ferry while you're making art. Um, he also makes art. Not, this is a, a letterpress. This is an image. It's, a, it's like a print, right? Um, it's a symbol that he's made. But he also makes art in all kinds of other forms. So you might have even seen people wearing what's called the Obey t-shirt or a brand of clothing. So he makes clothing. But he also does murals and street art. So I don't know if you've ever been out in Los Angeles walking around the city streets and seen a picture on a wall with a message or um, with words. So that's street art. And um, what's really special about street art when it comes to the idea of um, protest and conveying a message 
uh, is that it's out there for everyone to see. So this is one really uh, good way that Shep and Ferry kind of puts things out into the world. Oh, somebody says that they love Shepherd Ferry's Obey mural that they've seen here in LA, which is super awesome. So he's even, yes, yeah, he's done murals and are all over the world, actually, um, and including in Los Angeles. So, okay, equal rights for others. I think that's important too, equal rights. And that, what would, I think when we think, I'm just seeing some things come in on the chat, that's why I'm reading those things out, by the way. Equal rights for others. I was thinking, you know, what could you use um, to represent the idea of equal equality? What could you use to use to uh, to represent that? Got any ideas, Carmen? I mean, immediately the equal sign comes to mind. But <laughs> So you can use it's just two lines, right? The idea of equal. It's a very um, simple symbol, but um, very it's very important in like uh, LGBTQ um, rights. They use the equal symbol a lot in their um, imagery and their flags and stuff. Um, we have a couple of different things in here as well. Black Lives Matter. So um, their symbol is the blackest with the BLM right um, next to it. So that could be a good imagery for your poster. We also oh. have another um, thing for immigration rights, um, but also the climate. So they're putting oceans and plants to represent um, their cause. Um, the rainbow flag is also very good. Yeah. That someone said yeah. on, on the panel. Exactly. I love that. So it's just like, it's very similar. And also, sh sh think about the colors you use. Like you mentioned earlier with the purple, Carmen. Um, you know, the idea of the earth. Shepherd Ferry also chose these kind of blue colors, um, which kind of create that sense of nature and the earth, right? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing the image, um, but get, think, think about your, when I say, think about how you're going to lay the different parts of your image out. So is you, are you going to have everything in the center, like Shepherd Ferry? Are you going to have things out to the sides? Are you going to have, uh, is it going to read like from top to bottom? Are you going to have your letters upside down, side to side? So um, think about how you position everything and just take a look at how Shepherd Ferry layered the diff and put things on top of things. Um, so I'm going to switch back and stop sharing and switch back. Can I go back now to my art making screen, please? Thank you. your art making space. Okay, building. great, perfect. Also that comment about the um, Black Lives Matter and that that fist, uh, that's really, it's really important because that, that fist, that gesture has a whole story behind it um, connected to real historical events, right? So if your issue or event um, or uh, cause that you're creating your art about is really personal to you, you can always think of a story or um, something connected, a visual, a picture in your, that comes to your mind, and draw that. Draw some simple shapes to represent that, um, which can be a really cool idea. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, layering. But Carmen, is there anything else in the chat that I've missed? Um, just one more comment um, about combinations of uh, things that are important to people. So one person brought up a really good point on how uh, BLM is written in rainbow colors to represent um, individuals that identify both as LGBTQ um, Y plus and um, supporters of the BLM movement. So a combination of both uh, social justice uh, um, yeah. yeah, platforms and imagery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, an abs that's absolutely a great idea, you know, to combine different things. Because we're not, you might even have several things in your artwork that you feel strongly about, and you might not want to do just one thing. You could have a few different things if you want to. There's no rules here. You can really play around with it. And for example, this uh, that actually gives me a really good example for how you can use layering to join two things together. So for example, I don't actually have a, a rainbow um, here, but I could could make one. 
But it, let's imagine this tinfoil is rainbow colors if we're thinking about the LGBTQ movement, right? Let's imagine that for a second. Um, you could then put something on top of that, like the Black Lives Matter symbol. Um, you could have that on top and you could glue that onto the top of that image. So it would be like, you know, you could take something and put it in front and that would kind of create new meaning. Um, you can also, I know I've got tin foil here, but um, you can also look at your collage materials for how you want to, um, what they can bring to your picture. So, for example, say you really want to emphasize something, like one particular word. Say you want to really emphasize that word. Tin foil is very shiny. You could also choose something that's a really bright color, right? So, like, things that have this shininess or you have, I don't know, glittery tape or anything. Some people have glitter glue at home. You know, you could add stuff like that to exaggerate or bring attention to parts of your message. So, I like, you know, you can put words down and, you know, play around with it until you've seen the different parts of your picture really stand out. So you can make one part stand out more than another. You could also do that with size. So if you make one word much bigger than another, right? So there's lots of ways that you can do things. You can also combine um, images and words. So for example, I found this picture uh, in a magazine. So of a so you can combine pictures to create new messages and meanings. And notice how I've still not glued much down. We've got about 15 minutes left today. Um, and we're going to probably, I'll probably slow things down in about 10 minutes. But don't worry if you don't finish in that time. I'm hoping to just give you a bunch of different ideas that you can sit and play around with um, and keep adding to your protest poster you know, for the rest of the day if you want to, or over the weekend, keep making art. But basically what you want to do when you feel like you're happy um, with your artwork and with the um, your background and with the way that you've layered images and words, once you feel like you've got it into a good situation, a good place, so say I want to create something that looks a bit like this and um, add some, let's see, add, no, that doesn't work. See, it's good to kind of go back and forth. I'm going to put my, kind of like the idea of my flames being back in here. So once you're kind of happy with the way your artwork looks and you've, you've tried putting things on top or up here or down the sides or along the bottom um, and you're happy with how it it communicates your message. You can actually begin to stick things down. Uh, actually, there's one other thing that you could do um, that could be fun uh, to exaggerate parts. I feel like every time I do a collage project, there's always one really creative person who uh, makes things a little 3D. Um, so if you want to do that, like this is one way you could do that. I'm gonna, for example, take this word and I'm going to fold it back and forth like this. So I get a kind of zigzag. And it's not going to be like sticking off the page, but it will make it stand off the page a, a little bit, like just a little bit raised off the page, like this. So you see, hang on, let me see if you can, I can hold this up so you can see it. So you see how that becomes? kind of stands off the page like that. So once you've got all your pieces and you've played around, you can start gluing things down. So I'm going to take, I have a glue stick, but again, if you don't have a glue stick, remember you can use little pieces of tape to glue each part or to stick each part down. But I'm gonna, because I've done this in layers, I'm gonna kind of start with the bottom layer and then kind of stick it down in layers like so. And remember, you can always just keep adding things once you've done one layer. You can keep tweaking and 
and adding things. I'm going to stick this down like so. Remember, if you have any questions, oh, stop. Somebody's written stop wildfires. So, yeah, this is like a really good way you could do the, you could use flame shapes that you cut out of paper. And if you, oh, also, if you don't have um, red and yellow paper like I had, you can make your own colored paper if you have a red or a yellow pen or pencil, because you can just color in the paper and then cut out or rip the flame shapes out of that paper. So you can always find a solution if you don't have everything at home. Uh, you can make your own colored paper, uh, which is fun. Uh, and then you could combine it with different symbols, right? The idea of stop wildfires. And let's see, okay, right, back to my gluing. So I'm in the middle of gluing. But as I said, if you're not quite done uh, with your layering part quite yet, then um, don't worry. You can keep working on it. What I'm going to do when we get to about five minutes before the end of uh, our time together, I'll ask you all to, to start writing some words in the chat to describe your artwork so you can describe the cause so you don't have to do this right now but just think about it describe the cause that you decided to go with and maybe um write one word to dis describe um the colors you used or a technique you used or something like if you used made it 3d you could write 3d or if you use only pictures you could put only pictures or if you used, uh, I don't know, I don't know, some kind of fun color, you could write the color in there. And also maybe um, if you're doing this at home with your family or with multiple people, you could share something you really liked about someone else's that you're working with if you want to. You could do that too. And this is also a good time to ask if any, if you're struggling with anything. So if there's like one thing that you're having trouble representing, if you're like, oh, I don't know what to do for this, or I don't know quite how to draw something, like if you're stuck on something, then just ask the question in the chat and I'll do my best to help you out. Sorry, loud dingy noises in my computer. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'm putting this. Oh, see, I've glued. See, I nearly glued that down too fast. I want this under. I want this under that. So actually, I should do this one first. See? Not. There we go. Even if I stuck something down too soon, sometimes you can you can kind of peel it off gently. There's always ways round. You can always fix any mistake that you make. There's always I always find that any mistake I've made often becomes my fa the favorite part of my artwork. Okay. So again, you know, actually, um, the author uh, or authors of that the book that was read out. Um, they're actually filmmakers, and they make lots of films. Uh, so Spike Lee and Tonya Lewis Lee, his wife, they, it's like a couple that wrote that book. And they um, they make movies, they make films about different stories and issues that are important to them. So there's all kinds of art forms that can be a way to sort of change the world or make your message heard or communicate about something. So in some ways, art has you know, got a lot to do with kind of putting messages out into the world. And when I say art, I mean writing books, I mean, and also all of these things are creative, storytelling. You know, you can change the world by writing a book, by um, making a piece of art, by becoming a movie maker, <laughs> and you can tell, the, tell your stories, right? Tell the stories you want seen in the world. So it's really powerful. You know, words and pictures can be really powerful. And I still love that 
when when I showed you that Shepherd Fairy image, I didn't tell you anything about it, and you all kind of got the ideas without knowing anything apart from seeing the shapes and colors that were in front of you, which is, I think that's really powerful. Okay, let's see. And on that note, Billy, um, so protest posters are big on, like, you walk down and you show them, right? But mm -hmm. since uh, we're in this time of quarantining and staying home, it doesn't mean that you can't share your posters. So you could put it on your window if you feel safe enough to put your um, poster on the window. Um, you could take a screenshot of it, I mean, uh, take a picture of it and post it on social media. Um, and all those are ways of protesting and ways of um making your voice heard on what your cause what causes you're passionate about. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. That book was you know, I also love the book that's it's all about people that have changed the world in, in different ways. And there's lots of lot than that it, there's lots of ways to do that, but you know, making art is one of those ways and uh sharing your ideas. Um I love this, yeah. Oh, these are not, oh, really nice comments in the chat. So, um, comments saying they love your, your ideas on how to make your voice heard. <laughs> I love them too. Those are really good ideas. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways for us to, com to reach out and connect with each other. Um, yeah, there we go. So, I'm still going to keep adding things. I think I want to... I've glued this down, and I'm now realizing I wished I'd put some tin foil underneath it. Um, so I'm going to find a workaround. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can maybe cut a curved shape that will like go around the outside. See, even if you you know don't do things exactly how you wanted to do them, you can always find a way around it. Okay, here we go. All right. Like, I might not have it all the way around, but, you know, I can highlight, highlight different parts. And that, you know, when we were talking about how you decide to uh, create your artwork, you know, the idea of symmetry, things being the same on both sides, um, there's a word for all of that. It's called composition. It's basically how you choose to lay, that's what, lay things out, how you choose to arrange something. Oh, somebody just uh, wrote um, that it's a fun bonus when you, if you go out on walks to look in, there's often people put signs up in their windows, um, protest signs up in their windows to uh, make their voice heard. Sometimes they're signs that are taken on protests and um, they put them in their windows so that you can see, uh, so that everyone can see them. I always like seeing that when I walk walk out and it's similar to like putting pictures and images out like with murals they will have messages and ideas here we go i'm gonna add that now okay so we've got only five minutes left now or so i'm gonna one more minute and then i'm gonna start to try and ask you to type some things into the chat box uh to describe the cause and maybe to describe your artwork, just something about your artwork. You don't have to describe everything. Maybe your favorite part of it or the thing you're proudest of. So it could be a color or it could be that you made it 3D or that you, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of things that you could describe. So just think about that for the next minute. Think about what you're going to write to tell us because, you know, you know, one of the things that's really nice for me and Carmen is to to hear what you're doing at home, <laughs> hear what you're making. And maybe you guys have, or all of y'all have a, a cause that um, is not known um, greatly, so we would love to hear it um, mm -hmm. and maybe speak more on it. Because um, if it's important to you, um, we would love to, to hear about it. Or yeah. if you found yeah. a way to uh, symbolize another cause that's um, widely popular. Um, so instead of like the black fist uh, for Black Lives Matter, um, you have something else that you drew, or for women's okay. equal rights, or equal pay. Um, we would love to hear it. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's really good to hear if you've done something that we haven't already talked about or we haven't already um, read out. Oh, we have protecting the environment. Yeah, that's like Shepherd Fairy. It's also really nice. You know, if you have something that you've done that we haven't mentioned yet, there might be somebody else at home that's on this, uh, in, you know, doing this activity that did that too. And then you'll be able to share that, you know, I will read them out and you'll know that there's other people out there doing similar things to you or thinking about similar things to you. It's all about, you know, that's the thing about protest. I always find it, you know, when, in protest when it's when people gather right when people gather that share ideas and share things that they want to change in the world um and i think you can change the world on your own but it's also great to share your ideas um with other people so and that's also all what art's about right because and, and writing and books because None of those books or artworks would matter if other pe if people weren't there to see them and learn from them and think about them and talk about them. So let's we've got three minutes left, everyone. I'm going to ask you to um, put your cause in the chat and write one thing that you're really proud of in your artwork. So that could be the colour you used, just one word to describe it. You know, you could use the, the shapes you used. Um, it, you could write 3D if you made it 3D. Um, or anything that you're proud of. One word to describe something about your artwork that you're proud of. Um, so put those in whenever you can. Uh, I did see that somebody's put a cause, being creative and doing art with my young girls. Now, I did say at the beginning of this, I said that a cause can also be something personal it doesn't have to be a big idea so i really love that because sometimes you know in life when we have work and we're all crazy running around going to school doing stuff you know doing all these things sometimes we don't make time just to sit down and be with your family and make art so that's a great cause that's an example of like something personal right <laughs> oh we have somebody so it's somebody, Ruby, age six, has said, I'm proud of Biden for trying to be president three times, exclamation mark. Right. And also these causes can often be to do with politics, politicians, things going on in the world around us, right? Um, oh, somebody's written LGBTQIA and written the word colorful. So I can, I can, I'm already picturing this protest post in my mind and it, I can see it filled with color which is great so we've only got one more minute so if anyone else wants to share their their um, cause and something about their artwork that you're proud of and remember don't worry if you've not finished your artwork even when we um, say goodbye you can keep keep making art so somebody said that they've used foil um, and it makes the words pop. My poster is colorful. I love that. The idea of making your poster pop out, right? Um, and maybe for this last minute, we can switch back to my screen so I can actually read these and be face to face. And it's not about my artwork anymore. It's about all of your artwork. Um, somebody's written climate change. Oh, and why at age five, be kind to others. And he's used lots of hearts stickers oh i love that see it's great to use whatever you have at home um black lives matter and they and they put a photo of both black and white people i think that's really interesting i love that it's important we all when it comes to black lives matter those issues it's important for everyone to be taking a part in that yes i love that um Oh, somebody's even written, uh, they love the idea of using foil, but also yarn and fabric. I didn't even get on to that because, yeah, you might have fabric and yarn at home. And so you could use that to add um, texture. Um, be better to use that with um, the runny glue. That all helps really stick anything fabricy. Um, 
Let's see, did I? Oh, living things and climate change. That's two different ones. Um, yeah, okay. I think we've got everything. These, I love all of these ideas, these causes. I love that there's a combination of big ideas, but also things that are really personal to all of you. So I've really enjoyed making art with you. We're one minute over, but I've really enjoyed reading about them, your, your artworks. Keep finishing them off. Keep filling your paper with color and texture. And um, yeah, thank you. I think we're all, we're all finished up. Catherine and uh, Carmen, you got any last words? No, I just I love everything that everyone typed out. Um, big political things, climate change, personal things. It's all amazing. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Oh, thank you so much. Somebody's just written, this was lovely. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. And uh, there's lots more of these coming up. So keep coming back and making art because that's what we're going to do, make art. <laughs> okay. All right, so Catherine, are we, do we sign out now? It's time to say goodbye. Well, yes, I just wanted to say thank you so much to you and Carmen for an amazing art workshop. Um, and thank you to everybody out there for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the program. We're going to be hosting creative storytelling workshops every other week until June. So be sure to check out the full schedule online at lacountylibrary.org slash LACMA programs. Let me just put that in the chat here so you can all get the link. Okay, that's the wrong one. Let me put the link because we have a really nice little web page for it now. There you go. All righty. And also on the book list, if you are uh, also on the website, if you go to it, you'll see book lists if you want to read more about the themes presented in each workshop. And I just wanted to remind you, if you didn't catch the very beginning of our workshop, we have our positive parenting librarian here, and she will remain in the event for 10 minutes after the program if you have any parenting questions you would like to post in the chat. And I will also put the link for um, scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the positive parenting librarian in the chat if you'd like to talk to somebody later on. If you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at lacountylibrary.org and have a great evening. Bye, everyone.